anchors Diane Sawyer in New York, Sam Donaldson in Washington, and Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace. Tonight, a primetime hidden camera investigation. Human organs for sale in the United States. You'll never guess where they came from. I asked the doctor, where can I get the kidney? And they said from the prisoner. Prisoners like these executed in China. Their organs harvested for transplant. A very uh, barbaric and disgusting kind of practice. Go undercover with primetime. From a restricted Chinese military hospital to a New York hotel room. Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross on the trail of blood money. Aren't you here selling the organs of prisoners who have been executed in China? From ABC News, Prime Time will continue after this brief message. Prime Time, now from New York, Diane Sawyer. Good evening and welcome to Prime Time. Tonight we bring you a story we are sure that you have never seen before. We have learned that human organs are being harvested from executed Chinese prisoners and then sold to patients around the world, including here in the United States. How many? Well, human rights organizations estimate that since 1990, more than 10,000 kidneys from Chinese prisoners have been sold, potentially bringing in tens of millions of dollars to the Chinese military. For the past three months, Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross has followed what is really a black market in human organs. As we begin, you should know that this report contains scenes of graphic violence, and we let it stand as a warning. On a sunny day in New York City, in a hotel room overlooking Central Park, we saw and heard something that for years the United States government has officially maintained does not happen. But our undercover videotape tells a different story, documenting for the first time in this country a grisly but lucrative international black market, the buying and selling of human organs, in this case a kidney, from the bodies of prisoners executed far away in China. You will surely be satisfied with the arrangements for you, and the operation will surely be successful. I can guarantee this, no problem. This was the starting point of a three-month primetime live investigation that took us from Central Park South in New York City to the back alleys of Hong Kong to a restricted military hospital in southern China, equipped with the latest in American medical technology. It's a money-making operation. They're in business. This is an industry and uh, they're uh, moving it around the world. Dr. Ronald Gutman, an advisor to the International Transplantation Society, says it's been an open secret among doctors who do transplants that the Chinese military has been selling the kidneys of executed prisoners, perhaps thousands of them since the late 1980s. In my opinion, a very uh, barbaric and disgusting kind of practice. It makes me cringe, and I think exposing it is uh, very important. It's a question of supply and demand. A ready supply of prisoners to be executed, like these men, and a huge unmet demand for kidneys around the world. This Chinese military videotape, made in 1992 and never intended to be seen outside official circles, shows the condemned men and women paraded through the streets on their way to an execution field. This is a country which last year executed more than 4,000 people, some just petty thieves. It's not known what crimes these prisoners were convicted of, or whether the organs of any of them were about to be sold. But the tape shows guards precisely lining up their guns at the base of the skull. That makes retrieval of kidneys and organs much easier. And Dr. Gutman says certain medical preparations begin well before the execution. They're given uh, anticoagulant drugs, so the blood won't clot when they're executed. They're given muscle relaxants. And then, with a large crowd watching, the command is given. After the execution, doctors removed the prisoner and placed him in the ambulance. A Chinese doctor, Zhao Wei Chang, who now lives in Atlanta, told us what happens once the prisoners are dead. 
based on what he saw at his hospital just before he fled China in 1994. First, there was a cut from the back to extract the kidneys. Dr. Chen from the surgical department also took out the eyeballs and a piece of skin from the dead prisoner's abdomen. The orthopedist cut out one section of the bone from the lower leg. All the extracted organs were placed in a special kind of liquid to maintain the freshness. Then they rushed back to the hospital. In the hospital, two patients were lying on the operating table waiting for the transplant. When the ambulance arrived, the kidneys were placed into the patient's bodies. All the other organs were only for laboratory experiments. The rifle right away placed in the back. The graphic tape was secretly removed from military archives and smuggled out of China by an underground group of dissidents and provided to primetime live by a former political prisoner who spent 19 years in a Chinese prison and has become China's most outspoken and despised critic, Harry Wu. This is a fundamental violation of human rights. Just straight ahead. For the last three years, Wu has been traveling the world, trying to expose the black market in prisoners' body parts, which Wu says has spread from Asia to Europe and now to the United States as he showed us with a recent copy of a Chinese-language newspaper published in New York. There's a small piece of advertisement right here. What does that say? Kidney transplant in mainland China. Don't miss the opportunity. Call. So we did. <laughs> Our call to the advertised number in Bridgeport, Connecticut, led to this meeting in a New York City hotel with a Chinese doctor and his wife, a doctor and Mrs. Dai, who, with our hidden cameras rolling, told us they had already helped provide kidneys for several Americans, but that because of Harry Wu, everything had to be kept very quiet. You've probably heard of Harry Wu. I have to be careful because people calling us might have the same agenda as Harry Wu. We are fully aware of the sensitive nature of this issue. Usually we don't talk about this. With the help of a woman who works with Harry Wu, yeah, we told the Chinese doctor that a kidney was needed for a sick brother. And the oh, doctor I'm told us no problem, that he knew a month in advance that a new batch of prisoners' kidneys would soon be available. At the end of July, there will definitely be kidney sources that will match your brother's situation in age and everything. If you are willing to go there around the 20th of July to receive a kidney from the July batch, the total price for a transplanted kidney, according to Dr. Dai, $30,000 in cash, with a down payment to be made in New York. If you decide to go ahead with this, then you pay us $5,000, and we will order and reserve a kidney and a bed in the hospital. The hospital we were to be sent to is a hospital which, as the sign outside in English says, belongs to the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, called the Nang Feng Hospital, three hours north of Hong Kong. We came here as tourists, given the Chinese government's denial that it's in the business of selling the organs of executed prisoners. And we asked two Chinese dissidents to carry a hidden camera inside. This is the heart of the military's kidney business, an elaborate medical complex, where patients told us numerous foreigners had just received or were waiting to receive kidney transplants among hundreds of foreigners who have received kidneys here in the last few years. I just talked to the doctor. One of them was 38-year-old Apple Yunuch of Bangkok. The first time I asked the doctor, where, where can I get the kidney? And they said from the prisoner. That prisoner's kidney is now in her body. And even though it saved her life, the experience has left Ms. Yunuch full of regret and willing to talk with prime time breaking the circle of silence that has surrounded what goes on at the Nang Feng Military Hospital. First, she said, doctors in China took her blood and tissue samples and then sent her home to wait. 3rd of January, the doctor ca called me that there will be an execution. It means the prisoners, some prisoners are going to be shot dead. And one of them matches up with you? Yes. So I have to come over and prepare myself to be uh, to, to, to get the operation, kidney operation. Six days later, according to the local newspaper, 45 prisoners were sentenced to death and executed on the same day, including one who apparently, even before he had been sentenced to death, was found to have the same blood and tissue type as Apple Yunuch. 
So they were shot in the morning and the transplant was in the in, afternoon? In the afternoon, yes. Were there also other people who got transplants? Yes, yes. With kidneys from executed prisoners? Yes. In the course of our investigation, we also found that a big American corporation had played an important role here, the W.R. Grace Company, which through a joint business venture with the Chinese Army, equipped and helped to run a kidney dialysis center, where in addition to routine dialysis, transplant patients are kept going while they await surgery upstairs. W.R. Grace sold its kidney dialysis business last year, and a company spokesman denied that current management knew anything about the use of prisoners' kidneys for transplant. But a former Top Grace executive who regularly visited the hospital in China told Primetime that he was well aware of what was going on there. In our final meeting in New York with the Chinese doctor and his wife, who told us they were here on student visas and had connections back in China, we were assured the best medical care awaited us and that the kidney we bought would come from a healthy prisoner who would be thoroughly tested before he was shot. Regarding the prisoner's health, they're all given physical checkups and blood tests. They don't carry hepatitis or anything like that. All those carrying these diseases will be excluded. You see, there are so many criminals, they have a lot to choose from. And then we gave the doctor what he had come for. $5,000 in cash, down payment for a healthy kidney from a prisoner in China. Federal law and the state laws of New York and Connecticut make it illegal to buy or sell any human organs. Dr. Dai? Hey, yes. Brian Ross from ABC News. And when we entered the room with our cameras showing, the doctor immediately denied knowing anything about prisoners or executions. Aren't you here selling the organs of prisoners who have been executed in China? No. You're not? No. What, what do you think the $5,000 was for? $5,000 is introduced as a kind of service charge, right? How many people no. have you introduced to China? No. How many? No, I, it's, 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 uh, I, I don't want to. Um, it's, I, I think it's, it's my business. By some estimates, the kidney business has meant tens of millions of dollars to the Chinese military, which, even as the black market has expanded around the world, continues to deny any such business actually exists. In a letter to Primetime, the Chinese embassy in Washington suggested we stop production of our story, saying, quote, the so-called sale of criminals' organs in China is a deliberate fabrication with ill intentions, and that in the rare instance when a prisoner's organ is used, the death row criminals voluntarily sign up. Yeah, you're Dr. Gutman you're says that makes a mockery of international principles adopted in the wake of Nazi medical experiments. Uh, there's no such thing as, uh, first of all, as uh, uh, consent when you're talking about incarcerated people uh, to say, uh, well, we can produce a piece of paper that the prisoner has given consent uh, before we kill him uh, is kind of a, a ludicrous thing. No other country in the world is known to use the organs of prisoners except for China, which, based on our primetime live investigation, appears to have turned its chilling executions of thousands of people into a multi-million dollar black market of a kind the world has never seen. The U.S. State Department says that it has received reports in the past about organs from prisoners being sold, but could not confirm them. They told us they were eager to see our story tonight, and we'll talk with Harry Wu.